Hey, what's up guys? Dr. Shepard here. Today we are talking about medication treatments for ADHD. Medications are certainly not the only treatment for ADHD and we will talk a lot more if you guys want about different types of therapy that can be helpful for ADHD, different types of lifestyle changes that can be helpful. But for many people, medication treatment is a big part of their ADHD management. So what I wanna do in this video is just give you guys an overview of what the various treatment options are as far as medication go. I also want to note that in this video, I'm talking specifically about treatment of adult ADHD with medications, not necessarily childhood ADHD. There's a lot of overlap, but some studies do show some differences and sometimes we treat them a little bit differently. So that's why we're just going to focus on the adults in this video. So before we start, it is really important to note that you should not start or stop any medication without talking to your doctor about it first. This video is just meant to be general education. The other thing I want to point out is that different people are going to have different levels of tolerance, different people are gonna have different risk factors, different potential side effects. So this is actually a really individualized decision. I can give you sort of the broad overview and tell you what we generally see in people, but ultimately this is a decision that has to be made between you and your doctor because you guys are the only ones that know your case and your individual risks. Okay, so let's say that you've been diagnosed with ADHD and you and your doctor decide that medication treatment is going to be an important part of your overall treatment for your ADHD. Where do we go from there? I like to kind of group ADHD medications into two different categories. We have the stimulants and the non-stimulants. So this is actually gonna be a two-parter. We're gonna start in this video by giving you a general overview of medication management for ADHD, and I'm gonna to talk to you more about the stimulant medications. And then in part two, we'll dive into some of the non-stimulant medications that we use to treat ADHD. We're gonna talk about stimulants first because this is typically where most doctors start with treatment. The reason for that is that stimulant medications tend to work pretty quickly. So we know faster whether that medication is gonna be a good match for you. We also have some studies that suggest that stimulant medications might be more effective for the treatment of ADHD compared to the non-stimulant medications. Certainly not true for everyone, and the side effect potentials are going to be very different, so that might lead us to choose to actually start with a non-stimulant in some cases, but in general, we often go with a stimulant first. Of the stimulants, we tend to think of two different classes of medication, one being the amphetamine class and the other being the methylphenidate class. Most studies show that these are about as effective as each other. I find that in clinical practice, some people just tend to respond better to one than the other, but it's really hard to predict who that's going to be true for. So amphetamines as a class include drugs like Adderall or Dexedrin or Vyvanse. All of these are sort of amphetamine derivatives. Out of that class, I would say Adderall is probably the most common, but some people who also struggle with binge eating disorder actually do better on Vyvanse, which has an indication for both ADHD and binge eating disorder. So sometimes we'll start with Vyvanse. The generic name for that is Listix amphetamine. So many of these amphetamine formulations come in a short acting version and an extended release or a longer acting version. It usually takes between 20 minutes and an hour for the medicines to start working, whether they're immediate release or long acting. And we choose the immediate release versus the long acting just depending on how long you need the medication to work for. There are some people that like to feel like they have a little bit more control over when the medication starts working and stops working and they prefer for it to work for a shorter period of time, whereas other people prefer to just have sort of a steady dose of the medication that lasts them throughout the whole day, and so maybe they would choose the longer acting version for that reason. Some people also find that they're less likely to have side effects with the longer acting versions of these medicines, but again, that kind of depends on the person. Usually the immediate release versions of the medications last up to six hours, while the longer acting versions can last between 10 and 12 hours. So that's kind of the amphetamine class. Next Next, let's talk about the methylphenidate class. So in the methylphenidate class, we have medications like Ritalin, Concerta, Quilavant, Quilichu, Metadate, Detrana, and Focalin. All of these medications are different combinations of methylphenidate and dexmethylphenidate mixtures. And same as with the amphetamine class, we have the option of doing a shorter acting immediate release version or doing a longer acting version. And deciding on which to do kind of comes down to the same factors. Stimulants have a variety of different effects on your brain. 
but maybe one of the most important is that they increase the levels of certain neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and dopamine in the parts of your brain that help you focus and concentrate. They also help with things like your energy, your level of motivation, and they can even help with some of the emotional symptoms of ADHD, like your ability to regulate your emotions. As with any other medication, there are potential risks to taking stimulants, and it's important to be aware of those risks. Your risk for different side effects might be higher or lower depending on your history, and so it's something that, again, is very individualized, and it's really important to talk with your doctor. So in general, stimulant medications are pretty well tolerated when they're taken as directed. I would I would say some of the most common side effects are things like dry mouth, trouble sleeping, especially if you take the medication later in the day. Sometimes people feel a little bit jittery, more anxious when they take the medication, sometimes irritable. They can also decrease your appetite and cause things like weight loss as a result. And sometimes people have headaches related to the medication. It's also possible for people to develop abnormal movements or sounds when they're taking these medications. Those are called tics. But overall, the majority of people who take these medications seem to tolerate them pretty well. Studies have suggested that about 10% of people end up having to stop an ADHD stimulant medication because of side effects. So that means 90% tend to do pretty well. If you notice any of these side effects and they're bothersome, definitely let your doctor know because it's something we may be able to help with, whether that be by decreasing the dose, changing to another medication, or treating the side effects in some other way. Although very rare, there are some more serious side effects that I like to warn people about. One is that sometimes people can develop psychosis or mania when taking these medicines. So if you notice that you are hearing or seeing things that nobody else is hearing or seeing, or you're having significant changes in your energy, mood, and sleep levels, all very important things to mention to your doctor. But again, very, very rare. Stimulant medications also tend to, in most people, cause an increase in blood pressure pressure and heart rate. Usually this is very slight and not significant, doesn't really make a difference in the person's day-to-day -day life. But for a long time, this has made us worried about the possibility of these medications being linked with cardiac problems or heart problems. There's actually been a lot of research to try and figure out whether stimulants are associated with an increased risk of heart problems. And so far the evidence has been really mixed and inconclusive. So we don't really know for sure. So what I do is I screen my patients carefully to see if they have any history of heart problems and then if they do or if they have a serious family history of heart problems we may dive deeper into that and get some additional workup before we actually prescribe the medication. These kind of medicines are also at higher risk than others for being misused and abused and when that happens people are at higher risk for developing an addiction or a tolerance to the medicine. Every single side effect that we've talked about is much more likely if the medications are being used inappropriately or used in excessive amounts. So it's really important, again, to take these as directed. Okay, so that's it for part one. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll be talking more about non-stimulant medications. If there are other things that you wanna talk about, whether related to ADHD or not, drop me a comment below. Be sure to like and follow so that I know that this is hitting the mark and I will see you guys next time.